Uh, just your overall thoughts on how things went today. Obviously not the scrimmage you had planned setting up, but went inside. How do you think everything went? I think it's hard, you know, because uh, I, I thought it went well for, you know, roping off the end zones and, you know, we had to get the ball back two minutes. We had to turn it back around, you know, because you couldn't obviously go into, um, into the fans or into the parents and recruits. But um, – I thought it went well. I thought we got accomplished. We we had a couple of injuries, I think, but neither guy that was got beat up a little bit had anything to do with the live tackling, you know. So it, we practiced in there quite a bit. So uh, so we came out fairly well. I didn't think we particularly threw the ball well or anything of that nature. I thought the kids protected pretty good, and and uh, I think our runners ran hard. Uh, but it's stud, so it's you know it's just a different. You don't have an opportunity to break a tackle or or tackle a guy, and knock a ball out. There's just a lot of different things. But I think we did the right thing. I guess is what I'm. I feel like we did the right thing. We almost kind of gloss over or take for granted KJ. We don't ask about him a whole lot because we expect you know him just to be <laughs> KJ. But what do you think about the spring that he has had so far, and uh, where has he made the biggest improvements? He's had a really good for spring. Uh, I think his his biggest improvement I've seen is just knowledge of uh, seeing the game before it happens, pre-snap looks, things of that nature. He's he's much better in his reads right now than uh, what he was at any time last year. He's more confident. Uh, again, I don't think we particularly threw and caught the ball well today, uh, especially in the two-minute drill and things of that nature. But um, he's he's a lot better player than what he was last year, in my opinion, and it's because he just sees the game faster. He's mature, older, uh, stronger, things of that nature. But I think he's really improved a lot. Sam, a true freshman that hadn't really been benching much, but kind of flashed out there with James Joyner yeah. on that pass and a couple of three runs. Talk about him a little bit. Yeah, you know, he continues to get better. Uh, he's a hard worker. Um, I've really enjoyed watching his progress. Uh, I think he's getting a little bit more confident, you know. And today the kids seem to give him a little bit better hold than, you know, at times. We're down 12 linemen. And uh, uh, so, you know, the threes are usually the threes right now. But, you know, Amari and Harris and different people are playing with the twos and the threes. I thought that line played a little bit better today and gave James the opportunity to get started. And I thought he ran hard necessarily out there today, but through the 12 practice, I guess it is 12, whatever it's been. It is. Uh, how's, how's, how do you feel about the receivers at this point as a group? Well, we're thin. They're A, number one. Um, you know, last year we had Burke as your bell cow, as your go-to guy. Um, um, I don't know that we found that yet. I mean, we're closer. I think Hazelwood has that role. Um, uh, but I think he'll be a lot better, too, once once he gets through summer and understands everything. How about McAdoo? He, seemed, he, he was hurt at first, but he seems to be coming on and playing pretty well lately. Well, Max is, you know, he's young. He doesn't know exactly what to do yet. But he's a talented kid. He can catch the ball. He can run routes. Um, so he's getting better. Warren Thompson's had a pretty good spring. And, you know, the guy I like, a guy I like a lot is Keytron Jackson. I like him a lot. But sometimes you'll go through a practice and you know we're not getting a ball. You know, it's not at, at times there's not a lot of production. But I think he's a really good player. Uh, and then Bryce Stevens is, is, is continuing now to catch the ball better. And that was really his – we had to catch the football. So, I, I like – I think we have enough receivers to have a quality room in the SEC. We just uh, – we don't have a lot of depth in there and, and uh, we don't have a lot of proven guys. So, we'll have to, you know, have to keep working that. Sam, on the defensive side of the ball, like who maybe made an impression on you or flashed a little bit today? You know, I thought Nichols, Isaiah Nichols, you know, seemed like he was back there by me quite a, quite a bit, you know, uh, in the past rushing game. Uh, Eric Thomas flashed a few times. Drew Sanders flashed a lot. You know, he can run. I mean, he's a good player. Bump, cat. But <clears throat> the guy that really, 
made a lot of plays today was Kewan Parker. And he's moved up the he's moved up at corner uh, because of his physical, hard playing style and and uh I noticed him made he made a lot of plays. A young guy Crook Crook made some plays, you know, him and Henley, so but if I if I just said guys, Drew Sanders stuck, stood out to me and Nichols stood out to me and Kewan Parker. Whole, just what have you thought of the way Malik has thrown the ball? Maybe some drops contributed a little bit to maybe some of his I numbers think, today. I think with Malik, um, um, we've got. I think he's a lot like KJ too, getting him involved in the in the offense. I, I know, again, I don't know that today was a pick, particularly good day for him, but he has had good days this spring. And he always been to the practices, so he's had. Some really good days throwing the football, so I'm not, I'm not gonna make too a whole lot out of it today. But I I do believe he needs to be on the field for us to be the best team we can be, and we're continuing to try to work there. And and uh, it it may not, or it may be at the right pace. It seems like it's a little slow for me. We got to maybe get him a little bit more reps out there during practice at wide out. Coach, you mentioned some injuries earlier. Do you have any update on Torian Carter and who else maybe got dinged up? Yeah, Torian, I think, is going to be okay. But I, in other words, I think I think he does have some type of injury. I don't think it's a an ACL or anything of like that. I think there is something there that we've got to tend to. I, I mean, I don't know, but um, but I don't think it's a major major injury. Um, and then uh, Warren Thompson had he got he left the scrimmage when he hit his head on the turf. And so I'm not for sure if he's in concussion protocol or he just was, you know, ears were ringing uh, for a while. I don't know. But those are the only two that I can think of right now. And I, I may be wrong, but those are the only two I can think of. I know with Wagner kind of dealing with his little back yeah. deal, it gave Crawford an opportunity to play with the first unit. What have you seen from him this spring and how he's, how he's developed? I think it's helped us. I mean, you know, Ricky, you know, Tykeest is – there's a lot of teams can win a lot of games with Tykeest Crawford. He's a good player. I mean, like a legit SEC good player. It's really helped him um, with – like you mentioned, with Wags being – we're being super, super cautious about Wagner's back. We, You know, we have to get it healthy. And uh, – but Tykeese has allowed us to do that. And, of course, Ricky Stromberg's been out, you know, for a week now, maybe four practices, I think. And uh, it's helping us develop that center spot as well. But those two guys have been banged up a little bit. But I, it's funny you ask about Crawford because we were, we've been talking about him, about we, were, we actually moved him inside the guard um, for part of the practice on Thursday just to – He's playing really good, you know, so we got to find a place for him. When this day rolls around, it's usually thought of as like the last day yeah. of spring. So the next three practices, what do you expect to do? What, what Tuesday gonna... will be a regular Tuesday. It'll be situational, thud, and then it'll be about an hour and 50 minutes. And then Thursday will be a spider practice again, a lot like yesterday, a few, few more situational type things. And then next Saturday, I'm not 100% what, what we're going to do, but I, I'm pretty close in that we'll probably take the vets and do Indy, probably some type of team run, uh, not physically running, I'm saying like team run O versus D. And we might have a one-on-one -on -one session, uh, wide receivers, DBs, O-line, D-line, and then – scrimmage of threes, and that's it for the older guys. So that would be the plan right now, and it would be on Saturday morning. And, you know, we're going to go out here next week uh, because they're setting up in the stadium with Garth. So. There was a real buzz about this today with all the prospects and parents in there. What did you feel about, like, the way that the day set up from a recruiting standpoint? Well, I got here early, and I think I visited with – I think I'm at eight right now uh, for the day with parents and kids. And I think we have 25 kids on campus that we've offered. Um, so it's the biggest day we've ever had 
since I've been the coach here, and we have an official visit and things. So we, we, um, um, as soon as I leave here, I got a whole bunch more, uh, and I had a bunch yesterday. So we've got a good staff that works hard in recruiting, and I think it's set up pretty good. I don't know. Do you guys know if it was? Did it rain out there or no? Or do you know? Y'all were inside with me, weren't you? <laughs> so. I don't know uh, if it would have been any better out there or not, but I thought it went good for the kids. There, there's some chatter that you're getting really, really close to your contract deal, and like the terms of it could be something pretty interesting. Uh, any, any, any thoughts that you could give us there about how close you're getting and how you feel about it? Well, I mean, um, I've, ag I've agreed to what they've offered, and they agreed that – when I agreed, so I don't know what all that means. Do you? I agreed, they agreed, so that means I guess we agreed. How do you feel about it all? Awesome. Awesome. You know, I will tell you this, it's going to have a non-compete clause in it, and and that's about all I'll say about it until, but I'm glad it does. Uh, it allows us to recruit, you know, there's a lot of different things in recruiting, but one of them happens to be stability. And, you know, they can fire me, I mean, whenever they get good and ready to, but I can't leave, if that makes sense, you know, and, and uh, don't want to anyway, so it's, it, we're using that. But you have 130 schools, eight of them have the head coach, their offense and defensive coordinators still there in the last three years is what I read somewhere. So you got eight schools that got the head coach, OC, DC, of 130, the same ones they had three seasons ago. So, or going into their third season, excuse me. So we're trying to sell this contract as, as stability. Coach, what about um, Rashad Dabinian? I know you've been pretty high on him all spring, but what did you see from him today? And then what do you feel like he's improved on the most over the course of spring? You know, we went back and forth of whether to run him in there with the threes and things of that nature. But um, he's really a shifty runner. He's a mature kid. And there's no doubt in my mind he'll help us next year in games. Uh, not – not just special teams, but he'll be one of the backs toting them out because uh, he's a good player. The left tackle spot, you guys have tried a lot of different guys there, Luke and Brady Latham. I don't think you've tried to kiss over there, but – Not yet. Not yet, but is that in the plans? And well, what, what do you think about the battle over there? It's part of the plan. Um, we know Brady can play anything. I mean, he can play any position, center, including center. And so that's kind of a – but. It's like Ty Clary last year. He could play all the spots, but what if he gets hurt, you know? And, and so, um, yeah, Luke, uh, Devin Manuel, I keep thinking that he's going to come on, you know, and, and, and help us there. Uh, so we have about four guys with Ty Keese going to get an opportunity to do that as well. We have four or five guys over there, but uh, Luke definitely has been the most consistent of that group. This might grate on your nerves a little bit just because you've always said, I think, you figure out who your center is, figure out who your left tackle is, and then kind of go from there with the rest of the guys. Does that make you uneasy at all that you haven't had that position settled yet? Uh, well, I guess, Trey, part of it is I don't feel like we that, – that we won't be good at that spot. You know what I mean? I think that's part of it. And then you come back and you go, is this – hurting us, you know, and and then you go back and say, is this the best look? This is how we get the most yardage with these five guys in these positions. And I don't know the answer to that yet, you know, but I do know this, that we've tried a lot of different people. And, uh, and we'll find, I do believe that it starts at center and then it goes to left tackle, then it goes to right tackle. Not that the guards aren't important, they are. I think that's where you put your best players, and, and we've got to find out if, if that's exactly what we're doing or not. Coach, um, haven't scrimmaged a whole lot. 
ones, twos. How does that impact toughness, physicality, and do you get what you want in that department with how y'all practice this spring and, and your thoughts going forward? I think if you ask any of the kids, they tell you that we've thudded harder than we ever have here. And so, um, uh, I, you know, toughness is about, to me, it's doing what we ask them to do. So. Your O line, your D line, your linebackers—they don't. It doesn't matter to them except for the tackling part of it. It's it's alive in there every day, no matter what you the tempo you call. The secondary guys—that's where you know Barry and them have to tackle them in individual. You got to block them as wide receivers. You have to block an individual and all those things. But I think if you ask our kids, they would tell you this is the most physical spring that we've had. To be honest with you, now. We had half of a scrimmage basically with the ones and twos the first time, and I'm talking about live scrimmage, and then none, none this week. So, in a normal spring, we would have had another tackle to the ground, another probably uh, 75, 80 plays of live tackle than what we did this spring. But I do believe we're thudding a lot better than we have which our practices seem to be more physical that way. Coach, you mentioned Drew Sanders made a lot of plays today and flashed for you. There was one play where Malik tried to get to the edge and, and Drew met him there, and we know how fast Malik is. Is that kind of indicative of the kind of the, the player he can be for you all? He's fast. I mean, the guy can run. I don't know what his 40 time is or anything like that, but he runs sideline to side. The first scrimmage we had, he made the first two plays just, you know, running people down, uh, I mean, had angles, but today that was a wild deal for me too because I was like, Malik's out in the open and usually he's leaving everybody. And I'm not saying Drew can outrun Malik, I'm not saying that, but he did thud him up, he did tag, tag, tag him up. So, yeah, I think he's pretty, I think he's a pretty good player. Can you talk about Fortin a little bit and his strengths? I like Fortin. I mean, I do. His strengths would be that he's older, mature. He's been in uh, major college games. Um, he got a really nice – he's got a way of getting a ball to a player and not – you know, some co quarterbacks, they just want to fire it as hard as they can all the time. They want to show their arm. Fortin wants to complete the pass. I really like his uh, – I like his arm strength. He can play a deep. He can throw a deep ball. He can throw a short ball, but he throws it so the guy can catch it. If that makes sense, and uh, I like everything about the kid. I, I, he's 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 really helped us. Imagine right now if we didn't have him, we'd you know we'd be in trouble, trouble. But and part of the reason that probably that we don't have a fourth quarter is because we got him. So maybe maybe if we didn't get him, we'd still have three, no matter what. I don't know. Well, guys, uh, Rocket had a touchdown run today, and what do you think of him? And then when Dominique comes back, I mean, your running back room could be as packed as anybody. Yeah, that, that, I really like Dominique. I mean, I, I want him back, you know, fast we can. But in the meantime, the the kids that are do are, are getting better, you know. And Rocket, I think he just ran hard last year, you know. And he told me at some point he was just wondering about his assignment as he's running the ball, you know. And at that point, I mean, I know it's A, a to B to C or gap scheme or front side A to back side to B. I mean, I understand all that. But I think that was really going through his mind. And now you can see that he understands what his role is. He seemed to be a little quicker in making decisions to me this spring. I told him he turned out turned from being a hard runner to a running back, and uh, I think that's what he's done. And you've had knocks back the last several days. Had a big, had, had yeah. some catches today. Just the things he can do and yeah, I like going. him. I mean, he, he he's he's different. You know, it's like a running back uh, that does. You put him on the field and he does something different than the other ones you have. Trey's kind of a total package in there. He's got you know a little more speed when he's on the on the field. Uh, he looks great, you know, he's gained, gained quality weight. Uh, but he allows us to stretch vertically. Um, 
the nickels, the the safeties, the boundary safe, field safeties, and and uh, I think he's a good matchup. His speed on that speed, I think that becomes a good matchup for us. I had a follow up on Kiwan and Eric Thomas, and just what's led to them, you know, maybe what's led to them being able to flash today and maybe get in a position to, to contribute? Well, I think, you know, you a lot of times your your uh, your performance has to do with where you th how high you think you can go. So I think with Kiwan and Eric at some point last year they said, well, I can't get off scout team. So their performance they try to do well on scout team, but that drive's not there. Now I think this spring, Eric's like, I'm getting on the plane. I got a chance to play a lot. I got a chance to be in the two, two deep rotation because that's what we do on the D-line. So his talent that he already had, I think is shining a little bit more because his mind's, mind's allowing him to. He's not putting a governor on his mind about where, how far I can go. And I think it's the same thing with Kiwan. I think last year, and he's always been a hard-working kid, but last year he was on he was on uh, the scout team, and and uh, I think he uh, decided that's where he was going to be for the rest of the year. And but he was doing a good job. But I think this spring he was like, I want to get on the special teams. I'm going to get on the field, and he just keeps getting better. I, you know, there was a lot of physical plays by him today. I thought. Coach, uh, fill in the blank. This excites me about my team, and then why? Uh, toughness, and because it's the only way we can win, and we all believe that. I'm not saying you don't have to have great players, because you do. But if you don't have tough toughness, you can't win. You got no chance, and so. I like where we're at with the team there. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Thank you.